Ghana has now surpassed South Africa as the largest gold producer in Africa. And it's the seventh largest producer in the world. And it's the size of Southern Ontario. Welcome to the NAI 500 CEO interview program, where the senior management from select listed companies will share their insights with the audience about their company's growth potential. In this episode, we had the opportunity to speak to Ingrid Hibbert, the CEO of Palangio Exploration, a TSX venture listed company with a trading symbol of PX. Palangio Exploration is a gold exploration company focused in Ghana and Canada. A few highlights that readers should know before watching the interview. In the past, Palangio has been extremely successful in we interpreting Detour as an open pit asset which later spun out to form Detour Gold. Currently, Palangio holds strategic land packages in two world-class renowned gold jurisdictions, Ghana in West Africa and Ontario in Canada. Palangio capitalizes on opportunities for acquisitions in great market timing to create shareholder value. Insiders family and associates hold 25% of the company to create a low float. If you enjoy our video, please like, comment and subscribe to our channel so you can stay alert of our future content. Hi Ingrid, how are you doing today? Excellent. Uh, here, here we are seeing each other virtually. It's great. Yes, uh, this is the new normal, new world as they, as they call it. So uh, thank you for joining us today. Maybe we'll just start off by uh, uh, asking you because uh, Palangio Exploration has had a bit of history behind it. It's a really longstanding company. Maybe you can tell us a bit about the history, the background, how you, the last uh, project, the two Lake and how that's uh, come from there to, to until now today. Yep, absolutely. Well. In 1998, we saw an opportunity that we just couldn't believe would exist. So in 1998, Placer Dome was selling the Detour Mine and a huge land package around it that was relatively, well, virtually unexplored. And the mine still had a million ounces in resources and it had been a million ounce producer. So to get that kind of land package on the Abitibi Greenstone Belt was just, we thought it was the opportunity of a generation. We couldn't believe it was available. And we paid less than $1 per ounce in the ground to buy that. So we re-looked at it because it had been a mine that had not had a great success up to that point of time. And we re-envisioned it as a, an open pit. And in 2007, we saw an opportunity to team up with a great development group and we spun it out to a new company, Detour Gold. We owned 50% of the shares of Detour Gold. So that's 20 million shares. Then those 20 million shares went from $3.50 $3 to $38. So it was a huge win for our shareholders, like a hundred bagger. And that doesn't happen very often. So we realized that we had a strategy here that really works to look for big land packages on prolific belts when the, the market isn't looking for that kind of thing, when you can get a bargain. So as we were doing the spin out to Detour Gold, we were looking for another opportunity like that. Where could we get another big land package on a prolific belt? And another unbelievable opportunity presented itself in Ghana, which was 284 square kilometers directly beside Anglo Gold Ashanti's Obwasi mine. So the Obwasi mine had been in production for 100 years. It produced 30 million ounces of gold. It's got another 30 million ounces in resources. And I think there's more to come. So that was our next opportunity, very early stage. So we started to methodically do the work and uh, try establish that in fact, the trends went onto our property, we had the right geology and we did intersect uh, Boise style mineralization. So we can 
now say, you know, we got 24 grams over a meter and 11 over two. But while we were doing that, now that we were in Ghana, another opportunity presented itself. And that was a hundred square kilometers on a newer belt, the Sefwi belt, um, a newer, not in terms of geology, but in terms of people being, knowing it exists kind of thing. It's 14 kilometers from Newmont's 15 million ounce Hoffel mine. And we very quickly got onto that property and followed up a nine kilometer geochemical trend and made eight discoveries, three of which we've got a maiden resource on. So that almost brings us to current, but then more recently, <laughs> like two, a year and a half ago, two years ago, we saw an opportunity back in Canada, a private company uh, approached us and they had a portfolio of assets in Canada, including one that is right beside the dome mine in Timmins and another one near Kirkland Lake. So we acquired that project as well. Great, so I think that that's the reason why you have two distinct regions that you focus on. Maybe let's folks talk about your projects here. Let's start with Manfo, about this resource and any, any more growth potential over there in Manfo? Well, we're just getting started at Manfo. Remember, it's a hundred square kilometer package. Uh, we drilled into 2013 and then the market started to get tough. So we thought it's time to pull back on spending money like crazy. If you're going to hang on, to all of your opportunities, you have to be careful with your money. So then we took the time, we thought, well, we'll develop the resource, we'll do a 43 on what we've done so far. And that will help us in future define where we want to go next. So, um, you know, that remember that's only on three uh, areas on that nine kilometer trend. And in addition, there are parallel trends to look at. So we think there's tremendous potential there to make new discoveries and to increase the existing resource. Sure, you also talked about Uberasi earlier. So you have some good showings of work done in Uberasi and Degkren and two, so two so properties. So I didn't even talk about earlier because it sounded like one opportunity <laughs> too many, <laughs> but yeah. it was our most recent opportunity and it's at right directly contiguous to our Obwasi property. So it's another 35 kilometers uh, contiguous to our Obwasi property and it extends our reach along that prolific Ashanti belt. And for another seven kilometers. And I just want to stop for a minute and make sure people are aware of how uh, prolific Ghana is you know, as, a, as a gold producer. Ghana has now surpassed South Africa as the largest gold producer in Africa. And it's the seventh largest producer in the world. And it's the size of Southern Ontario. So just to kind of put it into perspective for you, it's a very prolific, uh, gold area and the Ashanti belt is the most prolific belt in Ghana and probably in West Africa. So we now have another seven kilometers with that Dan Cram property. So we've established that we have a Wasi style mineralization at Owasi on our Owasi project. So same type of mineralization as the mine, but we haven't gone through, we haven't made a an ore grade discovery yet. And now at Dancran, which um, is directly contiguous to a small producer as well. So the land package now is sandwiched between two producers. And we've done some soil uh, geochemistry and we've identified some great anomalies. And we're going to be drilling there in the next uh, two to three weeks, say, starting to drill at Dancran. That looks exciting at all. So you mentioned about Ghana, maybe you can talk more about Ghana. What are the advantages or, or even disadvantages of working and exploring in, in Ghana? Well, so, you know, you talked about a little bit about, well, why, why Canada and Ghana? And, uh, you know, there's a couple of reasons. One, uh, you know, I grew up in Timmins. So, you know, we know, and, and with the detour, we know Northern Ontario, we know the Canadian scene well. We've now been in Ghana for 10 years and we know it well too. And in my mind, there's tremendous similarities between the two. Uh, they're both Brit you know, former British colonies. So the 
the laws are similar. Uh, it's uh, you know British common law, so it's it's easy to work in and easy to understand. But more importantly, they have long, long gold mining histories. So that means you've got the infrastructure, the technical expertise, and the most important thing is the local communities understand the importance of gold and the potential for gold discoveries to generate wealth. For their communities to, to hear and so you you certainly have a lot of um, exploration work ahead in some of your projects there so will you be looking to raise more capital in the near future well we just finished a raise in december we raised 2.2 million dollars so that's going to allow us to do the work that we want to do that we've just discussed sort of a dan cran we're going to be drilling there then we're going to move over to manfo and we're going to do some air core drilling, looking for new discoveries, as well as some diamond drilling in the area of the existing resource. As well, we've got about $300,000 earmarked uh, for some work in Canada. I am assuming that out of that, there will be more drilling uh, warranted. And so, you know, at that time, of course, as you get good results, you'll want to follow up that up with more drilling, and that's going to need more money. For sure. So that's a good thing to happen. And uh, maybe you can tell us a bit about more about your team and who are the key people that can make this all happen, of course, including yourself there too. Well, you know, I'm a lawyer by training. So uh, every now and then people assume I'm a geologist and I'm not, mm -hmm. but I have a great team. I'm just, you know, so pleased to, to have this team. And for the size of company we are, the depth of technical expertise here is amazing. So I'll start off with Kevin Thompson, who is our senior VP exploration. And he's had 25 years plus of experience worldwide. 20 years of that was in Ghana. He lived there for 12 years. He was the regional West African regional manager for exploration for Newmont, which meant he looked at projects across West Africa. And after that, he worked with Perseus drilling off uh, several deposits. So he knows Ghana and West Africa really, really well. In addition, right on the ground in Ghana, we have Sam Turcardo, who's our VP Africa. Sam has a geological engineering degree and an MBA and ran his own consulting company. And then in Timmins, uh, Kevin Filo, who worked with me back when we did Detour, lives in Timmins and he takes care of our Canadian projects. And he's got, you know, 25 years of experience in internationally, but a real focus on Canada and the Abitibi Greenstone Belt. So we knew this was a good strategy before to have, you know, that strong local connection. But during the pandemic, it has absolutely proven itself that that is the right way to go, to have people right on the ground in the local communities where you're doing the work. In addition, on our, we have a board that has people like David Mosher, who was the geologist and president of a, a mining company, brought two mines into production in Burkina Faso. J.C. Saitamur, who was in the corporate finance side, but is also a geologist. And then we have the accountants and the lawyers. So, you know, you have to have us. Al Gorley is uh, the managing director in London for Faskins. And on top of that, on the technical side, we have an advisory team, Dave Paxton, who's a mining engineer based in London, Phil Olson, who's got a geologist also with 30 some years of experience and Warren Bates with 30 some years of experience. So the depth that we have in this company of uh, technical expertise is you know, second to none. Great to hear. You have a good team there. So in conclusion, so do you consider uh, Blendio at this point as uh, undervalued and, and why is that? It is undervalued, but uh, you know, everybody says that I'm sure mm -hmm. to you, right? But, but we really, um, we are, and we bear the responsibility for that a little bit, um, but it was, to some extent deliberate. If you have all of these opportunities and you're focused at, at that part of the market where gold is not in favor, if you're focused on finding opportunities and other than that, watching your pennies, you focus less on telling the story. 
Now we have the opportunities. We, so we have the great people, we have the great projects, and we have the great timing. So now's the time to be coming out and telling the story. And not only that, we have lots to say. For example, we didn't even talk about our Grenfell project, which is near Kirkland Lake, which was drilled in March. And again, uh, results came out in November, I think. And it we got 314 grams over 1.75 meters and 11 grams over three meters. And now we're gonna be drilling a Dan Cran and uh, Manfo. There's gonna be a lot of telling to do in 2021. So indeed, it looks like a great timing for our audience to start following Colangelo again this year. I would think so. I think, you know, the opportunities in this company in terms of the projects we have are great. It is undervalued. We're just getting out now to start telling the story. So take a look at our website. You know, there's a few videos around this one. And, you know, if you have questions, you can always call us. Thank you, Ingrid, for your time sharing such a good opportunity for us. Uh, thank you again, Ingrid, for your time here today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. If you enjoy our video, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel so you can stay alert of our future content.